Uh, from the way it's described there, you have lots of uh, rules that other schools simply don't impose. Can you give us an example of the kind of things that you do? Well, I have to say, actually, that um, our behaviour policy is probably very similar to lots of other schools. It's just that we tend to always follow through on it. But I suppose the big difference is we have silent corridors, so the children walk in silence quickly to their lessons in single file. Uh, why? Because it means they get to their lessons faster. And when you're trying to catch children up in the inner city with their reading and their maths so that they have a chance to uh, compete with their with their private school peers at 16 and at 18, it makes sense to be in the classroom for longer. Um, that's one big thing. Other things? Well, I don't know. That seems to be the biggest thing. I mean, the main thing is that we follow through on stuff um, and we hold our standards high for absolutely everyone. So people call our type of school a no excuses school, meaning that when the child comes and says, I couldn't do my homework because the dog ate it or the bus was late or whatever it is, um, you don't accept the excuse. Um, and I'd say too often in our schools, when you have, say, uh, children from poorer backgrounds or children where their fathers aren't there or children live, living on estates or they're black or they're any kind of ethnic minority, any kind of reason to think, oh, well, we should lower our standards for this child because the, the teacher who feels relatively privileged feels bad about keeping their standards really high because they think, well, I don't know what it is to be very poor, so I'm going to let their homework go in this instance. I would argue that actually in the end you let the child down because they never really meet those standards, and in the end when they leave school they leave with lower results and fewer good habits to be successful with their lives. I mean, that's one of the things that I don't think even your harshest critics could deny, that you do get results. I mean, the, 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 the pupils do uh, perform remarkably well. Uh, and, and these are largely underprivileged kids. So is this not a system that other schools ought to be considering bringing on board? Yeah, but like I say, there's a lot... Um... There's a kind of gut reaction against this. And there are other schools that do similar things that are very good on the discipline. But often uh, we as schools will get attacked for this sort of thing, reciting poetry by heart. For instance, we would sing God Save the Queen or Jerusalem in order to inculcate a love of Britain in the children. Uh, we often get attacked for that sort of thing. Um, and I suppose that's because the sort of woke left are very anti um, tradition and they're anti uh, strong discipline in schools. Um, they feel that it's oppressive. They feel that you're removing uh, freedom and um, kind of fun uh, from the classroom. But I would argue that things are all the more fun when you feel safe and secure, when you know that you can reach your classroom in one piece and you're not going to be trampled, you're not going to be beaten up. Um, and I think a lot of people who comment on these things don't really know the, uh, the realities of, 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 of schools with challenging intakes.